y'all welcome back to indigenous lifestyle vlogs i am crystal i am the creator of indigenous lifestyle and today it's going to be story time story time story time story time story time story time I'm going to talk to you guys about my natural birth experience, okay? I have three children, and my first two birth experiences did have the assistance of drugs. I, I went in with the intentions of having a natural birth, but I was young with my daughter. I was 18. I was very young. I didn't know anything about anything, and I didn't have no support, like literally no support. The doctor didn't support me, and I had a black female doctor. She did not support me when I said I wanted to have a natural birth. My mom didn't support me. She was like, what? Are you crazy? Natural? You want to do a natural? And they got all these drugs here? You tripping. What? And everybody was just kind of like, natural birth? What? You crazy? And I was like, yeah, I really, really wanted to do it natural. I didn't want to do any drugs. I wanted to experience it but I didn't have a lot of support and I didn't have a lot of knowledge I wasn't aware of a lot of things I wasn't aware of how to do it I just knew I wanted to do it I didn't research anything back then or anything like that so I got the epidural around six centimeters with that pregnancy so fast forward six years later okay I'm pregnant with my third baby who is it mm, mm, mm. hey Say hey, baby. Hey. Well, Mitchell is going to be joining us for the rest of the video. And it's great because this is the little baby that I birthed naturally. When I say naturally, I mean naturally, honey, okay? Oh, I, when I found that I was pregnant the third time around, I began doing so much research on how to birth you naturally, baby, with no drugs like everything that I needed to know and I was really blown away because I had no idea how the odds are set up against us when we want to have a natural birth in the hospital now the third time around I wanted to do it you know I wanted to have a home birth with my little uh, baby bathtub or baby swimming pool whatever they use I wanted a midwife or a doula like I wanted to have a real Zen spiritual birth experience but my lifestyle was not set up for all that okay I was living in Los Angeles I was living in a studio apartment with two kids and there wasn't no room to birth no baby in that apartment and yeah my funds was not set up to be able to afford a midwife or a doula either. So that was another big thing. So I kind of had to have my baby in a hospital. I didn't have any yeah. options. Um, <clears throat> L.A. became very hectic for me. And I ended up having to move back to my hometown, North Carolina, all the way across the country a month before I gave birth. I'm back and in North I Carolina. It's a month before my due date. And no OBGYN in the in my city would take me on as a new patient because I was so far along or so close to my due date. So I had to notify the hospital in the area where I live. There's only one hospital where all the women give birth. So I just went down to the hospital to just, I guess, like pre-register and let them know, hey, I'm expecting I'll be a patient, you know. Okay, guys. <laughs> all right. I wanted a natural birth experience, and inductions are not a part of that. And a lot of people, I wasn't even aware of that, but inductions are a form of medical intervention. So many things can go wrong by them inducing our labor. Our baby knows when, our, when it's time, when they're ready to come out, and when we start messing with stuff, we cause stress for the baby, and then complications can follow, and you know, that doesn't always happen, because my first daughter, I allowed them to induce my labor, because I didn't know any better, and literally, there was no reason to induce my labor, other than I was uh, overdue. That was the only reason. They, My doctor, i never forget, she told me I'm not going to let you go over five days. And because I didn't know any better, I was just like, okay, whatever you say. I really go into details about all of that on my website. I have a blog. Um, please click the link in the description box below so you can read my blog. I really don't want to dwell on all of that. This video is supposed to be about my natural birth experience. And I'm talking about every little detail.
It was a dark and stormy night. And it was about two o'clock in the morning. I might have to just. Okay. I had to get rid of Mitchell. He was doing the most. I was at home asleep in my bed. And I'll never forget that that night. At, towards the end, it was very uncomfortable sleeping at night. Like, I was tossing and turning all night long. My sides were hurting. Can't lay on your back or your stomach at this point. I finally, I had finally gotten to sleep. And I was in a good sleep. I don't know if it was raining a little bit that night or what. But I was sleeping very good. And I started having contractions at about 2 o'clock in the real. morning. Like, I woke up in the middle of the night. And because I was having Braxton Hicks contractions... I was like breathing through it and then I, I closed my eyes and tried to like doze off back to sleep. But then another one came like right back after that. Like there was no break in between or nothing. Like it came like right away. And I was like, whoo, I had to like sit up in the bed and just like breathe. And I was just like, okay, this might this is a little bit different. So uh, I went to the bathroom, tried to pee, see if I saw a, new, um, uh, a mucus plug or anything like that and I didn't but the contractions like kept coming so I was like all right let me time them and they were already y'all they were like one to two minutes apart and I was like oh my god so because they were coming so fast and it was just like all of a sudden it felt very intense so I was just like <laughs> Woo! now I'm a procrastinator and because I'm a procrastinator, I did not have my hospital bag already packed. Mind you, I was a week overdue to bag. Like, the, so here I am, 2 o'clock in the morning, contractions, 1 to 2 minutes apart, and I'm trying to pack a hospital bag for me and the baby. I just threw a whole bunch of baby clothes in a diaper bag, and I brought a change of underwear and a change of clothes for me. So... It's maybe about 3, 3.30 by the time I actually got to the hospital. I did not um, type up my birth plan. <clears throat> I was supposed to type it up and already give it to the hospital so they could already have it before I went to labor. I didn't do any of that stuff. But I had it all up here. And I knew so much about it. And I knew everything that they would try that I was just ready. Like I was so prepared for anything that they would have said to me. And let me tell you. When you go in that hospital and you know your stuff and you know exactly what you want and you know how you want your birth experience to go, you don't have to be aggressive. You just have to be assertive. And I had just enough energy to be assertive. I didn't have energy to be aggressive with anybody. So it's very important to do your research and prepare for a birth experience when it's in a hospital environment. You have to do that. So I went in there. I told them straight up, I don't want no IV. Mm -hmm. uh, if I need fluids, I'll drink water or eat some fruit. They already told me that they wouldn't give me any fruit. That's fine. I sent somebody to go get me some fruit. Um, I didn't want to be stuck to the fetal monitoring machine. And they gave me cordless ones. And I did not know that hospitals have cordless ones. So when they gave me cordless ones, I was like, all right, y'all can keep it on me or whatever. I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, just told them, like, this is going to be a natural birth. No drugs, no nothing. None of that stuff. So overall, I did pretty good. Um, I don't know what it is about six centimeters with me, but once I hit six centimeters, like it gets real. And I did all, I tried all the techniques. I, I did that majority of the time. I sat on the birthing ball with my hands and arms leaned up against the edge of the hospital bed. Most of the time I was looking down like this just breathing i had a lot of lower back pain during my labor so with my lavender oil i just had somebody like just rubbing my back like honestly people were rotating i needed my lower back rubbed with that lavender oil like the whole time like they had a birthing tool called the peanut and it was a big inflatable pillow the side um, the shape of a peanut but it was huge and they were like, if you put it in, but you know how you sleep at night and you put the pillow in between your legs? Well, that's what you do with the peanut. You put the peanut in between your legs, but it's so big that it forces your legs to be wide. 
which opens your cervix and helps everything to like go faster but i did that for one contraction and that was it because it got real intense after that and i was like oh hell no y'all tripping no so mm -mm. take that peanut back where you found it from nurse jackie I am, I ain't here for all that. I'm actually trying to do this naturally. And you about to give me something that's going to push me to the edge? No, ma'am. Take that peanut on somewhere. I got in the shower. Um, they had like an inflatable pillow that, I, that they were able to fit in the bathtub in the hospital. So I got in the shower. And the water felt amazing. If I, if, when, I do want more children. Next birth experience will definitely be a water birth experience. I don't know what it was about sitting in that shower, but I could have stayed there like for the rest of the time. I don't even know what, I think they made me get out because whatever reason, I can't remember. I was in ecstasy. I was in my own world with that water just running on me. And I can only imagine how great it would have felt to just be emerged and surrounded in water the contractions weren't bad it was just taking so long i had got checked in the hospital at three o'clock in the morning and my baby wasn't born until 4 4 30 p.m that night that's a long time to be in labor waiting to dilate 10 centimeters not even knowing really how far dilated I was because I didn't want them checking my cervix because I didn't want to risk the chances that they would like strip a membrane and induce my labor. I just remember like being so tired. I was very tired. I was very exhausted. I was falling asleep in between contractions like wake up, breathe through a contraction and then just go to sleep and then wake up. And then breathe through that contraction and go to sleep. Like, I was exhausted. Um, I remember, like, at one point, like, I was so tired and fed up and waiting that I, I, like, buzzed the button and I said, it's time, it's time. And so the nurses and the midwife came in there and she was like, all right, let's go, let's go. And nothing happened. <laughs> and she asked me she was like are you sure that it's time or are you just tired of pushing and I wanted to just break down and cry when she said that because it wasn't time and I was just tired of pushing and I was so fed up that I was going to make this baby come but I oh. can't do that so when it was time <clears throat> my body definitely let me know and I never felt this before because the other two times I was on drugs. So I couldn't feel anything from the waist down. That's how the epidural works. You don't feel nothing. Then. So this time around, I felt everything. And I'm not going to lie, uh, for a second, I was like, can I have some drugs, please? And they were like, Crystal, what are you talking about? This is the end. We don't have time to give you drugs. The baby's going to be here before... The drugs even get in your system and you start to feel it. So I was sitting on my bottom on the hospital bed at that time and my body just started pushing. Like that's the only way that I can describe it. I'm sitting there and it just feels like a humongous turd is coming out of my lady part. And I was just like, oh my God. <sighs> And I was like, I think it's time. And everybody was like, okay, okay. They buzzed it for me. And my body was just saying, get up off your butt. Get up. So I got up. And then, you know, within seconds, nurses, midwife came in there. They strapped up, ready to go. And I caught myself. I was like, can I stay up on my hands and knees? And my midwife was like, you can do whatever you want. Like, let's go. Let's have this baby. So I turned around on the bed and I was on my hands because, you know, the hospital bed like bends like that. So my hands were hanging over the, you know, top part of the bed and my knees were I was like almost on all fours. I was on all twos. And my hands were like up here on the hospital bed. And I just pushed. And that hurt. Oh my God, it hurt really bad. It burned. I screamed. 
I screamed so loud. I didn't even know that I could still scream like that. I felt bamboozled. I felt tricked because I watch all these home birthing, birth center, natural childbirth, hospital births before going into labor this time. And women, they seem so calm and relaxed and just, hey, just breathing through it. Honey, no. It was nothing like that for me. I had a rag in my mouth, biting down on that rag, screaming at the top of my lungs. Now, I only had to do this for about three or four push, and the baby was out. But, it was intense, okay? And I hope I'm not turning anybody off, because it was intense, it was painful, but it was freaking amazing, y'all. Like, oh my God. The way my body just naturally took over. I really didn't have to do it. I didn't even have to push. My body was pushing for me. I just was pushing because I felt like it would help it speed up the process. But it was just amazing. It was amazing. And I got to, I got to be there. And I don't know how else to describe it. Describe it. Um, but, you know. I wouldn't have it any other way. If I have any more children, I'm definitely going to do it the exact same way. Like, I don't even care about the pain. In the moment, I cared. But when it was all said and done and I did it, like, I really did it, it was just so amazing. Like, my baby, like, <sighs> drugs really do take away from the bonding experience of childbirth. I hope I didn't scare anybody from wanting to have a natural birth experience because it's the way it's natural. It's the way we're supposed to give birth to our babies and it's supposed to be everything it is for a reason to do that. So thanks for watching my video, guys. Thanks for joining me for story time. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will upload plenty, plenty, plenty more story times. In the future, um, um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you can be notified when I post my next videos because I'm about to be on it, posting videos a lot, as much as possible. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys for today. So thanks for watching my video. Bye.